Greetings, bienvenidos, and welcome to Jefferson Center's series of interviews to recognize Black, Indigenous, and people of color, or also known as BIPOC Mental Health Month. That is brought to you by Jefferson Center and our center's BIPOC steering committee. I'm Amanda Daniel, Manager of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion here at Jefferson Center. With us today, we have Julissa Soto, who is the CEO of Julissa Soto Health Equity Consulting. Welcome. Um, what else would you like us to know about you as we're getting started with this interview? Well, you know, well, thanks for the introduction, Julissa Soto, as Julissa Soto, and also CEO as Julissa Soto, Latino Health Equity Consulting. Everything I do has my name, because I love myself very much. So uh, <laughs> everything you're going to see, Soto, you're going to see Julissa, but it's all over the place. And um, I learned that at later when we have a conversation when we continue with this conversation i will let you know why is it that everything i do has my license plates in my car is soto one why is it that everything around me is julissa or soto but okay. anyways my name is julissa soto i'm an independent health equity consultant for and and also a commissioner for a suicide prevention commissioner i take the attempt survivor seat I'm also the vice president of the Colorado Springs Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Also, I serve in many boards, so I wear many hats every day. So it depends on what day of the week I'm here, you know, presenting myself. I will tell you what kind of hat do I have on that day. Okay. So how did you get into this type of work and your focus on uh, the Latino mental health? Well, when I came, I was born and raised in Mexico, in Michoacán, Mexico. And I came to United States 27 years ago. I arrived to um, first California because I crossed the border from Mexico, Tijuana border, and arrived to California and from there to Colorado. And when I started struggling with the healthcare system, that's when um, I used to run to the emergency rooms because I didn't know the safety net clinics exist mm -hmm. or the federal qualified health centers exist or the nonprofits such as yours exist. So I used to run to the emergency room for anything that was going on with my kids. And I remember being very frustrated and, and praying to God and saying, if you give me the power to create changes and help my children, myself and the community, I will dedicate my life, all my life to public health and to my community. And they say, be careful what they ask for, what you ask for, <laughs> because he gave me the power, he gave me my businesses and he gave me the, um, the voice of the voiceless. He gave me a loud voice. So uh, I'm here, you know, um, that's how my career started by frustration of navigating healthcare systems mm -hmm. that they say that they're there for us, mm -hmm. but not really. I think that when you have poor health systems, you also have poor health outcomes. And I see that all the time, especially here in this country. And can you tell us a little bit more about some of the barriers you see, especially for Black, Indigenous, and people of color in this country? And if you know anything specifically about Colorado, that would be great as well. My goodness, you know, the barriers. I can start from the language, mm -hmm. the, the status. And I'm talking to you about, um, I'm an attempt survivor. And I remember when, that day when all of that happened, um, a lot of people tell me why you didn't call this number or that mm. number. So many organizations that they're there so for you, you. You just didn't know. I just didn't know that they mm. exist, number one. And number two, I didn't speak English and I was undocumented. Mm. So why would I call a number where I know the more likely they were going to deport me mm -hmm. and not offer help mm. and make me feel dumb because I didn't speak the language, right? So those were the barriers, you know, it, for me, transportation. So I didn't have a car way back then. And the language, the language which was a huge thing. Mm -hmm. And also um, the doctors not validating my culture, talking to me like I was an American. When mm -hmm. they, when I, I had therapy after my attempt, you know, my therapist keep, told me, keep telling me, you are in America, you're good. And I'm like, well, I'm in America, <laughs> I'm in the United States, but when I go home, I, I'm still the Mexican that I am. I still watch Spanish channels. I still have to do, deal with a culture that is not okay with mental health problems or issues, right? I always struggle with depression and I knew that, but I didn't want to tell nobody because in my culture, mm -hmm. it's like, no, you're not depressed. You're just, you just don't feel well today. 
when you talk to somebody about it, they're like, please don't talk about that anymore. You're not depressed. That doesn't exist in our home. That has mm -hmm. never been part of our culture. Don't bring that to us. So when I heard that from my family, I never talked to them about it again. You mm -hmm. know, I had to deal with my um, depression and call it being weak because that's mm -hmm. what my family thought. That when you're depressed and you're sad, you, you have a lot of weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened. Well, no. also my experience has been that it's this idea that if you talk about it, kind of like cancer, how we used to be like, if you talk about it, you're going to make it happen. Or if you're talking about, so it's like, shh, like, like, yeah, like, be I, yeah quiet it's like, because if you talk about it, you're going to actually, you actually make it happen. Like you're giving in, like you're saying that. Yeah, weakness because you're, so. you're calling it to the universe. Mm, Everything yes. that comes out of your mouth. If you say I'm depressed, I you struggle with mental are. health. And if you don't, you don't have mental health issues, it's going to come to you mm -hmm. because yeah. we believe in that. You know, mm -hmm. we believe in the bad eye too. Like mm -hmm. if somebody gives me a bad eye and say, oh, Julissa is very intelligent, very pretty. Yeah. Oh, they give me a bad eye. And all of a sudden I struggle with mental health mm -hmm. issues, right? Mm -hmm. Which is all those are myths yeah, and like they're part the of evil, the culture. The evil eye. The evil eye. I'm mm -hmm. like, what did the evil eye has to do with mental health? But okay, you know, I, I learned how to respect and accept my culture the way that they think about mental health. Now, I refuse to accept with myself that I don't have a chronic condition. I do. And uh, I get it. I treat it like diabetes, right? Mm -hmm. You have your medication and your diabetes is controlled. Mm -hmm. You get your A1C test and you're good to go, right? Mm -hmm. I treat my condition that way too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really important to make that connection that physical, that mental health is is health yeah. and so what have you done to combat some of those stereotypes that you're talking about or that access to care and I am hoping with these kinds of videos that we can uh, get the word out that we're here and uh, that we can help in a lot of ways what what have I done is being loud about my condition <laughs> being loud and, and speak up and speak out mm -hmm. and say hey I am just depressed you know mm -hmm. it's like having diabetes It's like having any other chronic condition. I take my meds and I'm good. I'm a very intelligent woman. I speak out about that. Also, I talked about it every time that I can. I talked about my, my attempt, the before and the after, and, um, and how have I been dealing with that. And also being a super successful immigrant woman because I'm not a Mexico-American. I'm mm -hmm. not a Chicana. I am an immigrant. And as an immigrant, I'm very proud of all my accomplishments, including mental health, because mental health now is my best friend. So that's one of my accomplishments because I learned how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So that's an accomplishment. Yeah. To me, to me, that's an ac accomplishment because it's not like I'm like, oh, pobrecita, you know, I have mm -hmm. mental health problems or I have mental health issues. No, I don't see it like that. I see it. OK, one more person with me, you know, coming along in my journey and that's it Yeah, because there's a stigma there yeah it's a you, stigma that i'm loca and, and if you're like you as a successful immigrant mexican woman can say that you were depressed and you had a, a suicide attempt and you go to therapy it's like hmm, maybe i could do that too yes going to therapy speaking with somebody just make sure that you find somebody that that matches whatever you're looking for mm -hmm. and just make sure that you uh, reach out to many of the nonprofits that they're out there. A lot of those nonprofits don't charge a penny. Some of them might charge a little bit, mm -hmm. but if you have Medicaid, if you have any type of insurance, your insurance might cover your visits. It's always programs at no cost, but we just as an immigrant community and re immigrant and refugee communities, don't inform ourselves that much mm -hmm. because we stay among ourselves or they tend to be isolated because yeah we're you isolated yes you don't know like yeah if i do give my information what are what's somebody going to do with it exactly and that scare that fear is bigger than uh needing yep. to get the help if you get if you get that information are you going to deport me because when mm -hmm. i was at the hospital after i attempt um i don't you know it was i was struggling a whole lot when i woke up because I was um, handcuffed to the bed, right? And I was like, what happened here and everything else, right? Thinking, what have I done? And yeah. I was like, shoot, what is going to happen to my citizenship? Because by then, 
I was trying to fix my papers mm -hmm. and I didn't want immigration to know that I have attempt against myself and consider that maybe as a public charge. I had a mm -hmm. lot in my mind. Yeah. You know, I was not that worried about my mental health problems. I think I was more worried about immigration. And yeah. I know yeah. that immigrants and refugee communities, they're not that concerned about the problem. They're more concerned about immigration, what yeah. immigration can do to us. So in here, we're here to give hope to mm -hmm. those immigrants and to understand that going to therapy, being at the hospital, is not going to hurt them. I'm now a U.S. citizen. I have dual citizenship. I'm American mm -hmm. and I'm Mexican. And my incident didn't hurt at all. My status or, or my paperwork or you know. Mm -hmm. And for those people who may be listening or watching that don't know what a public charge is, could you just say briefly what that what that means? Yes. Public charge? Basically, it's something, you know, it's the law. If you are undocumented and you apply for benefits, they consider you a public charge. Mm -hmm. Basically, what the government of the United States want to know is that if they give you the right to be here in the United States, that you're not going to be depending on the government. For example, food stamps, TANF, mm -hmm. Medicaid, mm -hmm. all of those benefits, right? Yeah. But if your children are U.S. citizens and you come from a mixed status family, you are undocumented, but your children are U.S. citizens, your, your, your children can qualify for those benefits yeah. as long as you are not the one applying for those benefits. Immigration doesn't care about your kids because they're U.S. citizens. They care about mm -hmm. you. If you have applied for all those benefits, then that might hurt your the process of your paperwork and everything else. But if you have never applied for none of that, then that's great because immigration want to know that they have great citizens such mm -hmm. as myself, right? <laughs> I'm right. a U.S. citizen now. <laughs> hey, this is my country and, and I contribute to my country. Well, I'm bringing it back to BIPOC Mental Health Month. Uh, why do you think it's important for us to have a month that's dedicated to talking about these issues because we've had comments, like I hear comments like, well, we're just people like everybody else. Why can't you just treat us like normal because people of color are just people? Why can't we all just be the same? I, wh why do you think it's important for us to have a month where we can focus on and talk about these issues? No, if you can have the whole year, that's great, right? <laughs> yeah, we but, should be talking yes, about but it year round. But, but, but a very, month, yes, but a month is much, great, but. but I honestly think that no, we are not the same. I don't agree with that. We all have in here, you and I might have the same necessities, but the approaches and the outreach has to be different. Mm -hmm. I'm an immigrant. You're not. You might not, you might not, you know, face the challenge of the status in the language, right? When I was undocumented, mm -hmm. that would, that would be a big difference between you and I, especially to reach out for services. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant to say. So um, with communities of colors, we have to validate the cultures of the communities that we wish to serve in order to have better health outcomes. Therefore, yes, we're different. The black community is different. I can't say much about it because I am not black. Mm -hmm. Then the Native Americans, the outreach has to be different. And then even in the Latino culture, you have the Mexicans, you have the Central Americans, and then you have the Mexico Americans, mm -hmm. and then the Chicanos, and then Chicanos the immigrants and like myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't understand the Chicano community. I don't understand Mexico Americans. I'm an immigrant. I understand my immigrant community. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, so, how do you think that people that aren't part of a BIPOC community can support or be an ally to communities of color? By um, to support communities of color by mm -hmm. having better policies by having better programs and program when i say better programs is because you, you guys programs are already good but better programs when it comes to bipoc communities have have maybe a night to speak with a therapist not to have a therapy but just to introduce charlas mm -hmm. you know just platicas with a therapist mm -hmm. do you think i need this or not in the african community then you might have something that attract them and and i i just think that um that you know, people who are not part of the BIPOC communities need to understand that they can sympathize and empathize their struggles, but never replicate it, right? Mm -hmm. You can never replicate my struggle, and I know that mm -hmm. because I was the one that it was 16 hours in the trunk of a car. I was the one that attempt 
took care of herself, right? Mm -hmm. You will never replicate my struggle, but you can empathize with me. So I feel that lots of support for BIPOC communities. Um, like the great idea that you have for that campaign of tattoos and everything else. I mm -hmm. think that's super cool, but also publicizing all of that because I feel that a lot of the times the mental health providers, services, nonprofits are not as loud as they should be. We still quiet, we still not very loud. We still, um, and, and even in, when I go to galas, um, meetings, people talk about mental health, but then say it's exactly the truth. How did you get there? I wanna hear the stories of people. What made you wanted to kill yourself? Was mm -hmm. your, bad, your life that bad that you wanted to kill yourself? Like give us the chance to talk about our stories. Give us the chance to be loud and support us with that and through policies. Then when I introduced myself and you know, the new Julissa came along and now I'm the CEO of my own company and doing pretty well. Yeah, and that you're not afraid to, to say who you are and, and to talk about what your strengths are and that you bring strengths to the table. Yeah, I know me, Nina. I'm not afraid, I'm fierce. <laughs> I, I'm fierce and when, you know, when I get called to be a keynote speaker, I always send them to my website and I say, please okay. look at my website because I don't want you to limit me from my words. And mm -hmm. they're like, can you give us some bullet points? No. Why should I give you bullet <laughs> points when you're the one that looks for me? Yeah, you're asking me to come. Uh-huh. You're asking me to come. So you do your homework, mijo. You do the bullet points for me. And then I'm going to tell you one thing. I do talk a little bit about politics. I talk a lot about God and I talk about reality. All those things that Americans tell me never to talk about, I do talk about those mm -hmm. things. And by so, being authentic, you yeah, have been my own successful. life experiences. Yeah, my yeah. Own, I'm not lying here. It's my own life experience. Yeah, because lived experience is is very different, like you're saying, than reading something in a book or uh, having somebody tell you their story. Having lived experience is very. Uh, is very important and so i would like to thank you for coming here and sharing your lived experience and is there anything else you would like our viewing audience to to know as we were talking about bipoc mental health month and cultural validation and those kinds of things yes i would like to tell everyone not to give up to keep persevering even though they might feel that they don't belong it's a lonely world we're all lonely and, and people might see me and they're like she's an extrovert she's successful she has so many people around her no i get lonely like everyone else and but i want everybody to know that it's always a way out and it's gonna get better but if you if you want glory you must go to work and you're and when i say must go to work you're gonna go to work between yourself but then you're gonna experience experience the glory in the glory it's wonderful when you get there nobody can stop you and i'm experiencing glory now so after i went to work well i believe that well thank you so yeah. much for for being with us here today gracias por estar aquí con nosotros Lisa. y qué comentario tienes para los que están escuchando o, o viendo nosotros en este mes de uh, the bipoc mental health month que quieren el, que, que sepan. El consejo que yo les doy a todos este, y que quiero que sepan es de que no están solos. Siempre hay servicios allá afuera para todos ustedes. Encuéntrense ustedes mismos, ámense en ustedes mismos. Tengan esa pasión porque recuerden, si quieren gloria, van a tener que ir a la guerra. Uh -huh. Y veo que, que uh, tú eres guerrillera. Yo soy guerrillera al 100%, soy Adelita, soy de lo que me quieras llamar, pero... Soy guerrera, eh, yo ya pasé por la guerra y ahora estoy viviendo la gloria. Gracias. Gracias a ti.